This is a Fox News Alert. I'm Neil Cavito. A key U.S. senator is now moments away from issuing a statement on Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Maine Senator Republican uh, Susan Collins reportedly wants to hear from the judge and the woman accusing him of sexually assaulting her when they were both in high school decades ago. She is not alone. Other senators, including Arizona Republican Jeff Flake, have urged putting off Thursday's planned Judicial Committee vote until they hear from Christine Ford, now 51 years old. For his part, Judge Kavanaugh emphatically denies the charges and wants to testify himself. He was seen at the White House today for quite a while to Blake Berman on that and a lot more from the White House. Hey, Blake. Hi, Neil, and what a day it's been here at the White House. We heard from President Trump on this issue moments ago. He was asked by a reporter if Judge Brett Kavanaugh has offered to withdraw, and the president responded by calling that a, quote, ridiculous question. The president very much standing behind his Supreme Court nominee. He's an outstanding intellect, an outstanding judge, respected by everybody. Never had even a little blemish on his record. In a statement today, Kavanaugh once again denied that he sexually assaulted Christine Blasey Ford during a party in their high school years. His statement reads in full, quote, This is a completely false allegation. I have never done anything like what the accuser describes to her or to anyone. Because this never happened, I had no idea who was making this accusation until she identified herself yesterday. I am willing to talk to the Senate Judiciary Committee in any way the committee deems appropriate to refute this false allegation from 36 years ago and defend my integrity. Earlier this morning here at the White House, uh, Kellyanne Conway, one of the top advisors to the president, said that uh, the White House would be open to Ford testifying publicly before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Ford's attorney said her client would be willing to do as much as well. There have been calls to put this entire process on hold until that potentially happens. And the president was asked just a little while ago if this process should be delayed. This was his response. It depends on the process. I, I'd like to see a complete process. I'd like everybody to uh, be very happy. Most importantly, I want the American people to be happy because they're getting somebody that is great. I want him to go in at the absolute highest level. And I think to do that, you have to go through this. If it takes a little delay, it'll take a little delay. Neil, you mentioned that Kavanaugh showed up here to the White House earlier this Monday morning. The president said he had not spoken with Kavanaugh today. Neil. All right, buddy. Thank you very much, Mike Berman, at the White House. For now, uh, they want a Thursday vote on uh, the judge's nomination to become a Supreme Court justice, but that now looks increasingly unlikely. The Fox News Senior Capitol Hill producer Chad Pergram. Chad, what are we looking at now? <laughs> Waiting for Susan Collins, the Republican senator from Maine, to come out, uh, and she might take a couple of questions for us. Why is Susan Collins so important? Well, the Senate right now is 51 to 49 in favor of the Republicans. There's not much turning radius for the Republicans there, especially if they were to potentially lose the vote of Susan Collins and maybe the other moderate Republican senator from Alaska, uh, Lisa Murkowski. Jeff Flake, also a Republican, he's a member of the Judiciary Committee from Arizona, and he wants to tap the brakes on this. Keep in mind, if they are going to reopen these hearings uh, in some form. You know, they have said, and Susan Collins has said in particular, that they want to hear uh, under oath from Brett Kavanaugh again and also from Christine Ford that they don't have much time to do this. They're talking about that Judiciary Committee vote on Thursday. It's not written anywhere that you have to have a Judiciary Committee vote. Clarence Thomas got, uh, you know, no rating from the Judiciary Committee in 1991 and was still confirmed. Robert Bork was voted out unfavorably and then he was defeated on the floor. So, you know, what would happen here, you know, you have Yom Kippur hitting on Wednesday, starting Tuesday night, in fact. And so if they were to reopen these hearings, Neil, there's no way they could possibly get this until Thursday and Friday. And if they can't get all Republican senators on board, look at the Democrats who might be willing to vote for Brett Kavanaugh under other circumstances. Look at Joe Donnelly from Indiana, Heidi Heitkamp from North Dakota. If Republicans can't put up 50 votes, it's very unlikely, Neil, that uh, Democrats would vote yes. So you know, we're trying to figure out what's going to happen in the next uh, you know, day or so here. Senator Orrin Hatch, Republican from Utah, he is the most senior Republican, the president pro tem, spoke by phone uh, with Brett Kavanaugh and says that he doesn't think that, uh, according to Brett Kavanaugh in his conversation with Senator Hatch, that he was at the party that has been mentioned here, Neil.
All right, uh, Ted Pergram, thank you very, very much. Again, we are waiting for uh, Maine Senator Susan Collins, what she will do. She has said uh, she wants to hear from this woman. She also wants to hear um, the judge respond to what uh, she has to say. Now, the, the issue is how much time uh, this could add to this process. So we're watching it very closely. Uh, is it a matter of a nomination delayed or denied? Democratic strategist Jessica Tarloff, the Washington Examiner's Gabby Marangelo, and market watcher Melissa Arma. Melissa, I'm glad you're here because I imagine denied might rattle investors. What, what do you think? Actually, if it does, it would be a temporary reaction, not a reaction that would last a long time. I really don't think that the market cares whether or not he goes through this process, whether it takes a week, whether it goes off on Thursday, whether he never even gets through. Trump is going to pick someone else if they don't approve him, and he will pick another conservative person to, to be the judge. So I don't know what they hope to gain from this. Everybody seems to be so against this poor man. And honestly, it's a he said, she said at this point. Well, you know, a delay could change the equation a little bit, right, Gabby? If, if it gets really delayed after the midterms, or let's say the Democrats were to take the Senate, for example, all bets are off, right? Yeah, that I mean, that introduces a whole new change to this entire process, and I think that that would absolutely inject some uncertainty into the markets if we reach a point where we're approaching the midterms just weeks or days away even, and we still don't have a Supreme Court nominee who's gone through a confirmation hearing, assuming that uh, Kavanaugh either withdraws her comp his confirmation or the White House urges him to do so. I don't think that's going to be the case. If you heard the president speak to reporters earlier today, he said it was a ridiculous question to ask if Kavanaugh had even floated that and that he wants the full process to um, be completed before we make a determination one way or another if he's qualified for this position on the high court. Um, but I do think that, you know, if we do come to the point where we're in the 11th hour before the midterm elections, and it does seem as though there's a steady chance that Democrats could take back the Senate, um, that this would really create problems for Republicans. Jessica, uh, we are waiting, obviously, to hear from Maine uh, Senator Susan Collins, of course, who was uh, very focused on the Roe v. Wade issue and it wasn't a given that she was a yes vote. It looked increasingly likely. Uh, has the equation changed a little here? Oh, it definitely has, and we have to wait for new information, and I'm heartened to see so many senators on both sides of the aisle saying that we need to hear uh, from Professor Ford as well as from Judge Kavanaugh. Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski were the first two Republicans that people were looking to to see what they would say. I, I would say that's kind of implicitly sexist that we should be looking to the ladies first, because uh, it was Jeff Flake and then Bob Corker who came out uh, actually initially to say that we need to hear from Professor Ford, but the equation absolutely changes. I happen to, sadly, not think Democrats are going to take back the Senate uh, come November, but that would 100 percent change the equation. And to Melissa's comments uh, just a moment ago about, you know, calling Judge Kavanaugh this poor man and using the language, you know, he said, she said, she might very well be right here. And we have to make sure that we're being fair here. She is a very competent person. She has a, a great big career. Her testimony, which I'm sure everyone has written or what was in the Washington Post, seems truthful. So they should and both I, get their chance to state yes, their case. Yes, absolutely. But, but, uh, let me uh, get a sense as we're waiting to hear uh, from Susan Collins uh, this issue, and it has been raised before, sexist though it may sound, Melissa, that uh, Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski were crucial Republican votes who might not be given yes votes. Uh, and, and I'm wondering how this is sorting out. When you look at this and factor it into what you do, what do you do? Listen, again, I don't think the market's very bullish. I'm very bullish in the market right now. We're close to the highs in every index, the Dow and the S&P. And I think whether, whether even if the Congress doesn't stay Republican, I think that Trump's still the president. So therefore, right. the market's going to continue higher. But as far as the, the poor man comment that I said, here's, here's my problem with this. Who is going to want to serve our country and run for political office when they have to go through scrutiny about things that happened when they were far back as teenagers? We're not going to have anybody left. Nobody's well, perfect. And I'm not saying this man did it, and I'm not saying he didn't do it. I don't know. All I'm saying is, you, when you put yourself out there and you're willing to serve the country, and these people don't get paid a lot of money, who's going to want to do it? Well, well I it mean, seems you like might a not lot get paid a lot of money to be a Supreme Court justice, but there is a little bit of a, a power. You know, <laughs> so, a power held to that. Ladies, I'm sorry to cut this short here. I don't want to pass along some other news we're waiting for here. Very shortly, we get, should get details from the Trump administration, how it's going to go after China on additional tariffs, uh, eclipsing $200 billion in still more Chinese goods that are being targeted. Ahead of that, the market had been trending downward here, anticipating that this trade war was getting nastier. Still waiting for... Susan Collins, much more after this.